I just found a journal while cleaning. It's one I didn't write very much in, but it's one I started in 2019 while my youngest was a baby. And I started it in an effort to motivate me towards weight loss. I bought this beautiful leather journal with craftsman paper and this leather bookmark. And I was like, this is gonna be fantastic and I'm gonna be honest and this is gonna be it. And I am gonna lose this weight. The first entry, is June 16th, 2019. I didn't start Bright Line Eating until February 27th, 2021. It gets me emotional to say that because the things I wrote in here, I felt for a long time. I felt them for longer than the year and a half between when they were written and when I started Bright Line Eating. But let's just read. June 16th. 2019, 10 o'clock p.m., 182.2 pounds this morning, feeling bloated and gassy, crampy, out of breath. I'm exhausted by 1.30 p.m. I have a lack of focus or energy, three cups of coffee a day, looking around, feeling uncomfortable in my skin. I know I'm not trying right now. I know the way I'm eating is damaging my body. I want to lose this weight for me, I want to lose it so I feel sexy, so I feel comfortable, so I feel coordinated and strong. I want to be a hot mom and keep up with and build relationships with my sons in an active way. I want to have a butt that Curtis is always smacking, a waistline his hands gravitate towards. I want to make the most of my body, not abuse it. I want to be rid of my body. I want to rid my body of cancer through diet. I want to do it for me, not for Facebook or Instagram before or after photos. It's not for points. It's for life. Jesus, help me. I surrender these desires to you and your will. I love you, and my life needs to be more about you than it is about these things. Awaken my soul to you. I love you, Jesus, and I miss you. That is one example of one prayer that I prayed. And when people say, that bright line eating is an answer to their prayers. When they say that bright line eating is a miracle from God, when they call Susan Pierce Thompson an angel, it's not an exaggeration. The next day, June 17th, I did a weigh-in, 182.4. June 18th, 182.3. Not enough sleep last night. Keto all day yesterday, but had blueberries and milk, and then 320 calories of chips. July 9th, 183. 0.4 pounds. I feel so gross. I'm not comfortable in my skin. I hate myself in photos. Things need to change. But I can't eat keto because it makes Levi constipated. And that, my friends, is the last thing I wrote in this journal. Because despite how heartfelt and sincere this was, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it based on my desire and my will and my pain. That was not enough because I'm a food addict, because it wasn't within my control, because it's a sickness. It has nothing to do with how much effort or drive or desire I had. I had so much drive, but I couldn't do it because I, it wasn't about me. It was about the fact that I was under the control of the sugar and flour. It was affecting my brain. I had dopamine down regulation going on in my brain. I needed another fix and I kept going back and back because I was sick. That's all there is to it. And when I read the Bright Line Eating book, that is when I figured out for myself what was really going on. I'm cleaning out in my bedroom right now, which is why I found this. But I picked up this book and I started reading it and I started finding there's testimonies in here. Here we go. This is one of our coaches right here, Lynn Colston. I started reading their stories, story after story, and it just seemed easy. Lyndon Morris Del Rio, another one of our coaches. Their stories meant something to me because I identified with the before version of them. I had tried this, I had tried that, I had tried 
10 to 15 different diets in my life, 10 to 15 different exercise programs. I was trying stuff. I was working hard. I was putting in the money, the time, and the effort, and I was getting nothing. The difference that the Bright Line Eating book makes is that it talks about the brain science, the neuroscience behind addiction. It talks about your cortisol levels, your leptin levels, your insulin resistance, and the science behind why the sugar and flour are causing us to eat more and more and more. It talks about the different areas of your brain that are affected, your brain stem, the nucleus accumbens, the prefrontal cortex, which I know is involved in the ADHD too. And she showed us why sugar and flour affect the brain the same way that other drugs affect the brain. It's not a moral issue, it's a medical one. By the time I finished this book, it took me a while. When I got to the food plan, I threw the book across the room. But I did eventually finish the book. And when I did, I realized, despite having eaten keto for three years, this was not something I could do on my own. This is bigger than that. So I signed up for the boot camp, which at that time was about $1,000 Canadian. And it was worth every penny I paid. I got plugged in. I watched every video. I did everything Susan said. I cleaned out my pantry. I bought the scale. I got the journals. I found a buddy in the, in the prep module. She's like, find yourself a buddy. By week one or two, I was hunting down a mastermind group. I was getting in there. And as soon as I was able to after boot camp, I was on those accountability calls every morning. When I was detoxing, I treated it like rehab. In my head, I was wearing like the scrubs, lab coat, whatever they wear, and, and like the hospital slippers. And I was puttering around a sterile detoxing environment. And I walked around my house, I made my bright meals. And between those meals, I sat down, I crocheted, and I watched bright line eating material. That is how I got from one meal to the next while I was detoxing. I did that for at least four or five days. I just let myself detox. And after that time, I started getting into some habits and some routines and it got a little easier. I found my people. I had people to lean into when I got hungry, when I got scared, when I had to go to restaurants, when I had to eat around other people and I just wasn't sure what to do. And when I got restless and I got tired and the weight loss was ramping up, I slept. I slept like a log, like kids throwing Legos at my head and I would not wake up. That's how tired I was during weight loss. I plugged into the Instagram community. There is a huge Bright Light Eating community on Instagram and they are second to none. They are absolutely amazing, encouraging, beautiful people. I got so much accountability there. I got creative there. I realized I could do Bright Line Eating and still be a creative person. I could make up fun new recipes and I could delight in my food and still eat bright. I did it one day at a time using all the tools and then some. Knowing my ADHD, I knew I needed to have a reward system for myself constantly. So every bright day, got a post-it note. And if I did something especially remarkable, it went on there. Now I'm at a stage where I exercise. So that goes on there too. My weigh-ins go on there. And every bright day gets marked. These are the calendars for year two. Year one is right here. All folded up with all my food journals from year one. I wrote down my food every single day. And I still do every single day. Over 640 days in, I still write down my food every single day. The interesting thing is I got really used to seeing the scale move down and eventually it kind of stopped moving down. At first I didn't really notice because it kept going up and down by three pounds over and over again. And then eventually I actually noticed that it was doing that and I realized it had been doing that for about five months. At first, I called this a plateau because I was still about 10 pounds away from where I wanted to be. But over time, I began to realize, you know what? This is actually a really good place for me. I started taking the time to look at myself in the mirror and deciding how I felt about it and realizing, you know what? I look pretty good. It took me a long time to come to terms with the fact and the reality that I'm not gonna have six pack abs the way a bikini model does. I wasn't a bikini model before and I wasn't gonna be one now. I was hoping I was gonna be the exception being that I'm in my thirties, but I'm not because I got some loose skin. So it became time to land the plane. 
and I was thinking it wasn't gonna mean anything. I'm five foot two and my weight was already plateauing out. What was that gonna mean? It meant a couple of things for me. I started adding movement. At first I tried adding in like big rigorous exercise programs like I used to do and I realized I didn't like them. They felt kind of punishing for my body and that's not what I was about now. I was about fueling my body in a beautiful way and I was learning to love my body and doing exercise till it hurt just did not seem to fit with that. So I took a one day at a time approach with my exercise. I decided I was gonna set timers. I set a 20 minute timer, cause 30 minutes feels like a real amount of time. 20 minutes feels like the amount of time I would spend zoning out on my phone. Everyone's got 20 minutes. So I set a 20 minute timer and I just decided that I had to move my body intentionally for 20 minutes every day. With my bright lines helping me lose the weight and just my 20 minutes a day, the results became like, they came flooding in. It was unreal. I've got abs like I have never had before. I can do sit-ups now. I've never been able to do sit-ups. I can do about 25 to 30 push-ups, man push-ups in a row, all because I'm doing it one day at a time, like Brightline Eating taught me. But the thing that I'm the most excited about, I think, is that I followed through on something. I can actually accomplish something, especially when I do it one day at a time and just take it little by little by little. I began to translate this to other areas of my life. I read through the book of Psalms. I'm now reading through the whole Bible. I spend more time with my kids. I took a parenting course. I actually took a coaching program for my ADHD and I am still using tools from that course months later, still every day using some of those tools to make my life better and more productive. I exercise every day, I meditate every day, I'm doing inspirational reading every day, I'm using my sad light every day when it's the dark season, I'm not drinking any caffeine. Every morning I spend half hour on my phone with other bright lifers on an accountability call. Every week I meet with my mastermind group and I message with them throughout the week. Every day I dedicate a little bit of time to supporting and asking for support on that Bright Line Eating Facebook community. And just recently I started exploring the world of being a guide, which is kind of the Bright Line Eating term for a sponsor in other addiction programs. That inner work is a big deal because I have ADHD and I have always been the flaky one. I've always been the one that doesn't finish what she starts. I've always been the one that's not reliable. But that is changing thanks to Bright Line Eating. My whole trajectory of life is changing. The things that I think I can accomplish, the goals that I'm setting for myself, and the reality of how much I'm believing in myself has changed because of Bright Line Eating. And like I wrote in that book, it is not about a before and after picture. It is about the life transformation. And I knew I wanted that years before I even found the Bright Line Eating book. Bright Line Eating not only helped me lose over 77 pounds, Bright Line Eating has changed my life and it is absolutely worth every day having no sugar, no flour, not snacking and measuring my food. Those are the four lines. Every day I use those four lines and it is worth it every single day because my whole life is looking brighter. Thank you.